Hi everyone, welcome back to Harris BI. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use AI skill in Microsoft Fabric and what is the difference between Microsoft Fabric AI skill and uh, Microsoft Fabric Copilot. AI skill is one of the latest feature added into Microsoft Fabric. It is like a uh, artifacts that you can create on your workspace. And let's see the prerequisite for using this AI. So if you see the prerequisite, you need to have at least F64 or a higher fabric capacities and you need to enable all of these settings on your microsoft fabric tenant ea skill tenant switch copilot tenant switch and then cross geo sharing for ea so this is the basic prerequisite for you to create an ea skill so here on my workspace i'm using a fabric capacity i have a f64 capacity so here i'm going to create a ea skill right so to create a ea skill just go to more options and you will see a ea skill under uh, data science so here you can see ea skill so as like other uh, artifacts you just simply select and just provide a name so i'm just naming like my demo ai and click create as of now this ai skill is in uh, public preview uh, so once this ai skill is created you will be landing into this uh, window right. so here i'm going to choose this lake house so this is nothing but an adventure works uh, uh, database tables so which i've created as a uh, lake house so here I'm just adding that lake house. So this will list out all the tables. And here I have to specify what are all the tables which I need to consider for AI skill. Right. So let me choose uh, uh, dim customer, dim account, dim date. So I'm trying to choose a uh, few tables, product, product category. And then I'm choosing this uh, fact internet sales and then uh, maybe fact reseller sales. So once I have selected all the tables which I want to consider for this AI skill, I just need to click uh, get started. Then I will uh, get this uh, window so where I can ask any question about uh, my data. So here example, uh, I'm just asking this question. What is the most sold product? So if I ask this question, so this AI skill uh, in the back end, it is using a LLM model which will go through all the table metadata and it will try to create a SQL statement. As part of that SQL statement, we will be getting a, a result. So here you can see this is uh, constructed this uh, SQL statement for the uh, question that we have asked and it is saying this is the most sold product. So in case if you feel like this SQL statement is not correct, it's supposed to consider let's say total sales amount instead of uh, quantity you have option to provide some instructions to this ia skill so based on that instruction uh, this ia uh, will try to uh, provide uh, different sql statements and that will give you more accurate result so to add more instructions uh, you can use this window uh, notes for model so this is a window where you can uh, provide some instructions to this uh, ai and it will uh, use those inst instructions to uh, frame this uh, SQL statement. So for example, I'm just uh, trying to give uh, uh, statements like uh, this. Uh, so uh, yeah, it, it can be anything like uh, it can be relevant to uh, the context uh, that you are expecting. Uh, so once you have provided the in instruction, you just try to ask the same question. So if you see here. Uh, so the typically like uh, let's say if you have multiple uh, fact tables involved if you have sales amount across uh, multiple uh, tables so in this case i have reseller uh, sales and then internet sales so sometimes it might be difficult for ea to understand be able to be considered right so here i've just given an information so actually i have need to consider this uh, sales amount and again sales amount from my uh, fact internet sales so that's why like i've just given an instruction saying that uh, whenever uh, uh, there are any uh, questions related uh, to the sales amount the primary table to be used as a fact internet sales only uh, use reseller sales if explicitly asked right about the resales so again uh, for whenever i asked about the most sold product or items the metric of interest is total sales revenue and not orders quantity so here also i'm just explicitly calling out so don't take a quantity and say that is a total uh, or most sold product so because previously it is just taking a quantity right so this is not correct so that's why like i've added all of this instruction so once i've added ins instruction you can see this is a total uh, sales revenue for this particular product so we can consider this is a most uh, sold product and you can see what is the sql statement which is used to generate this result so like that you can ask more questions 
and if a is not generating an expected results you can add more uh, uh, instructions here so here you can add uh, 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 multiple instructions here so you have a character limit of uh, 15000 so within that limit you can add uh, all your instructions and uh, a will uh, uh, read those instructions and uh, will uh, perform as per uh, the instruction so this is one way of uh, training the ai to get a uh, expected result the another option would be like uh, i have just another scenario so i'm asking how many uh, uh, active customers did we have uh, in june uh, 1st 2023 so here I've just asked this question again. This question uh, will be passed and then we'll run against uh, these uh, the selected tables. So here you can see it is just taking dim customer, dim internet sales, and it's just taking directly the the specific uh, date. So if I want to just try to give some more context, uh, right? So if I feel okay, this is not the right way to get the information. So what I can do, I can just go to this example SQL queries. So here I can uh, provide an example. So when I say an example, you can uh, you can provide some uh, uh, sample uh, informations like uh, sample questions like how many active customers did we have in June 1st, 2020, 2020 sorry, 2010. So I'm just asking a different date and I know what to, I mean, I, I know how to write a SQL statement to get uh, the expected result. So I can add that SQL statement because I have already validated and this SQL statement works for the given scenario. I just provide this uh, SQL statement just for an example and it will try to validate whether all the syntaxes are correct. Once that is done, just click close uh, and you will see one example added. Right. So in case if I ask the same question here, so, so here if I ask the same question, so it will try to generate the uh, 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 different response. Right. So like that, you can just provide an instruction in a uh, natural language or you can even provide a SQL statements, the reference SQL statements, which it, which has to be considered for the related queries. And uh, with that, the EA will be again further optimized and you will get uh, expected results. It is not just like uh, adding uh, uh, one particular question, right? So you can, you have option to add multiple questions. So here I have option to add multiple examples, right? You, let's say if you have uh, uh, more number of examples to be added you have option to import as a json right so here if you download this as a json if, so if you see here this is an example so here it just uh, within json uh, that open curly braces and close curly braces so the first parameter is about the question that we have to be that we have to ask and what for this question what is the answer like that you have you can construct multiple question and answer uh, the key value pairs and then you can upload that as a json into this and all your references will be considered here uh, as a multiple SQL queries and then you can ask uh, uh, your questions and then A will give you an answer. This A skill you have data might be stored in uh, lake houses where you want to uh, allow business users to ask any question about their data. Create a SQL statement based on the questions that they have asked and from that uh, it will give them a uh, expected result. So as of now uh, this uh, uh, a skill can be exported as an uh, uh, endpoint and that endpoint can be called only within notebook so probably in future uh, this can be accessed by different applications which can be easily integrated in a kind of a chatbot where uh, a business user can ask a question and uh, it will leverage this a skill and will, they will get a response so once all the developments all the trainings are completed they can just uh, uh, simply publish so once this is uh, publish you can just go to the settings you will see an endpoint so this is a published url just copy this as i mentioned uh, as of now this supports uh, to call from a notebook i can just go to a notebook and uh, here i can just uh, refer that uh, endpoint so once this is done i just simply uh, ask uh, what whatever question that i want to ask uh, for this as so this is the user question section and uh, once I just click run, this will execute against uh, that AA skill and then uh, we will get a, a response here. So the response is 200, uh, it's supposed to show the actual uh, product, what is an example product. So now uh, we understood the AA skill. So AA skill is to, uh, uh, is to help get the insights from the available data and it will be primarily using that SQL statements against those table and it will generate the results where you have option to train the model 
by adding more instructions as a note and then or uh, you can have some uh, reference sql uh, queries added uh, uh, for a training purpose right now let's talk about uh, uh, the difference between a and uh, uh, copilot right as you know like uh, you have copilot in microsoft fabric and also this a skill is uh, recently introduced so most of the people will try get confused uh, where uh, should use on what scenarios right so a skill uh, here you can see uh, the configuration with the a skill you can configure the a to behave uh, the way you need that you can provide it with instructions and examples that uh, tune into a specific use case so which means so uh, you have to train this a skill on top of the tables which you want to consider which will be coming from your lakehouse or warehouse right so that is how like uh, the a skill works but whereas if you take a copilot copilot does not offer this configuration flexibility because uh, you will not have a flexibility to train the copilot so copilots are already trained by microsoft they are still keep uh, training the copilot uh, for a better experience but uh, you don't have a flexibility to uh, configure or uh, train the copilot the use case for the copilot can help you to uh, do your work on the fabric so when i say uh, uh, help you to do a work uh, so as you know like this copilot is natively integrated across different experiences like uh, uh, data factory uh, uh, data flow gen 2 and then uh, kql data warehouse right so on multiple places so uh, this uh, copilot is natively uh, integrated so that will be uh, useful for developer to get the uh, uh, code right so they can ask a copilot about how to write the code how to get the information using the code copilot will help them to generate the code and they can make use of it right so on other aspect the copilot is again natively integrated in power bi within power bi also uh, the developer can leverage copilot to uh, Uh, to ask any questions related to the dax let's say if they are asking anything about uh, uh, create a dax script to show the uh, rendering some of the specific uh, condition so copilot will help them to create a dax script on the other hand uh, like a copilot will be useful for business users uh, who are uh, uh, who are accessing the power bi report they can act they can access a copilot they can ask any question about uh, their uh, semantic model and their data set and it it will give them an uh, expected answers and also the copilot can be used uh, by the business users to create uh, their own uh, self service reports so there are multiple use cases with copilot uh, so this copilot uh, if you want to see from our uh, insight generation perspective power bi copilot uh, will be a right choice for a business users to get a proper insights but for that you need to build a semantic model uh, with uh, all the tables relationships and all the business logics uh, as an uh, dax dax measure whereas if you go with the a skill that is also going to give you a, a insight generation option but it will be on top of uh, the direct tables using sql uh, queries so that is the main difference and uh, uh, there are some limitations with this uh, a skill so you can just uh, easily go through all of these uh, limitations uh, in case if you want to consider for your use cases right so uh, one primary information would be like uh, as of now this copilot supports only the one uh, data warehouse or a, or a lake house uh, set of tables and you cannot use copilot uh, uh copilot uh, in another applications uh, for a proper integration right uh, so it has to be done only uh, within the uh, notebook right if you see here you cannot connect a skill to fabric copilots microsoft teams or other experiences outside of fabric and you cannot change the llm uh, that ai skill use but uh, you have option to train these llms and i'll share this link on my uh, youtube description you can just go and uh, verify all these limitations so this will give you an idea uh, uh, how this co- copilot can be pitched to your organization and uh, how this ai skills can be considered for your set of use cases i have a dedicated video uh, covered about uh, uh, copilot uh, for power bi so i'll just leave the link on the description and also on this uh, cards and you can just go and check uh, how the power bi copilot works if you have any questions about this ai skill or copilot you can uh, uh, ask your questions on the com- comment section thank you for watching my video